So one thing that I want to emphasize is this issue of agenda setting that is so important. And in our case, and all the hubs I know are doing that, we're, we're asking countries, where, what are your needs? What are your, your priorities? And I think that's quite unique. We're not coming from within a pre-established agenda. And the second thing that maybe that I want to highlight in terms of the South-South cooperation and, and, and this is that not only the agenda setting, but the generation of knowledge itself is done by, um, of course, not exclusively. It doesn't have to be one against the other. It has to be in collaboration between researchers in the South and the, in, the, in the North. And this is very important because it allows to identify, for example, invisible populations that, that are very different in each continent and also allows to identify solutions uh, that maybe might be very innovative, actually, because in poor contexts, I think there's a need for innovation that maybe doesn't occur in other parts of the world where there's more wealth and there's more capacity to solve uh, problems in other ways. So uh, our countries are have been pressured, if you want, because of circumstances to be very innovative sometimes in how to tackle challenges. So I think that's the other thing which is very important is how can we capitalize the knowledge in terms of solutions coming from the South. I'd like to pick up what, on what we were discussing about the innovations. And uh, <clears throat> sometimes what happens at KICS also allows for us to sometimes organizations who are seated in the global north to know of what we are calling innovations, but in a way are things that are working very well for many years, sometimes for centuries, and they could now be scaled to benefit the same context in which they were working. So that's a part of kicks that we are trying to scale things that work. Either they are new, or they are already proven to, to work in a specific context for many years and being guided always by our national teams. So I think it's uh, the first part of our kicks work is always to listen. And uh, all our hubs, we have wonderful national teams. Um, there are people who are working in the ministries of education, with the civil society organizations, academia, development partners. So we are working with individuals who are already sitting at the system and working with the people who are make that system work, listening to their needs and trying to, as much as possible, make the, the links between the needs they have for knowledge production, knowledge exchange and capacity strengthening that further amplify the efforts that the governments are doing because the governments, at the end of the day, they are the ones who are carrying out the education reform agendas in their own countries. OK, to rebond on the questions of innovation that uh, are au the uh, justement du processus the process and the questions of research, bien entendu. Uh, au niveau de Kicks Africa 21, nous avons fait un, un important travail d'identification des innovations au niveau national. Et encore une fois, uh, la crise sanitaire, en tout cas, le contexte de crise sanitaire, uh, nous a permis de nous réinventer et d'adopter une approche euh, euh, particulière et une approche itérative aussi avec les pays et de voir comment, euh, dans ce contexte de crise sanitaire, comment on pouvait continuer à travailler avec les pays. Eh bien, il se trouvait qu'au niveau national, les pays pouvaient se réunir. C'est vrai que ça ne pouvait pas se faire au niveau régional, mais au niveau national, euh, il y avait cette possibilité. Donc, euh, nous avons organisé avec euh, les pays des dialogues euh, politiques euh, en interne et qui consistaient donc à, à mettre ensemble toutes les parties prenantes de l'éducation, encore une fois, en, en présentiel, euh, que ce soit les partenaires techniques et financiers, la société civile, euh, donc les, les ministères de l'éducation, en tout cas les, tous les acteurs euh, qui travaillent dans le secteur de l'éducation pour euh, identifier donc ces innovations qui, qui, qui est passée d'abord par euh, une première étape qui consistait à faire un appel à, à communication pour identifier ces innovations au niveau national, ces innovations qui ont été remontées, qui ont été sélectionnées euh, de manière rigoureuse avec toutes ces parties prenantes, euh, avec des grilles de notation sur la durabilité, la, 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 la manière de mettre à l'échelle cette innovation, euh, mais aussi... Euh, l'inclusivité de l'innovation et tout un tas de, de critères euh, qui avaient été définis euh, pour euh, voir si l'innovation a été vraiment porteuse de changements qualitatifs. 
dans l'éducation. Et ce travail a été fait dans un certain nombre de pays et euh, avec un consensus, euh, bien entendu, euh, sur ces innovations. Et ces innovations, bien sûr, euh, sont alignées sur les priorités euh, euh, nationales de ces pays. Et ce qui est intéressant encore plus, c'est que la plupart de nos pays sont dans ce processus de pacte de partenariat avec euh, le PME. Et donc, euh, naturellement, euh, ce travail a nourri euh, la réflexion pour l'élaboration du pacte de partenariat euh, au niveau euh, des pays qui ont entamé le processus. Et ça, c'est formidable parce que on avait de la matière, on avait des données euh, pour alimenter justement euh, ce pacte de partenariat et aller vers la transformation euh, du système éducatif dans son ensemble. I would like to, to maybe highlight Um, before going into some examples, the approach that I think is quite unique um, that we have worked from from Kix Hubs and of course with the IDRC Kix team, which is I think it's an ecosystem of innovation approach, and I think that's very important because when you talk about innovation in today's world, we usually are looking to a, what economists would say a Schumpeterian perspective. Uh, and, and at least from our perspective, sometimes that would be a dangerous uh, perspective. What does that mean, uh, a Jupiterian perspective? Is thinking that innovation is about individuals coming up with a very interesting uh, idea, usually very, what we call very flashy or, 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 or fireworks of innovation. And, and the danger of that is, uh, first of all, is that Innovations are thought as individuals working in isolation. Uh, and second is that innovations are just flashy ideas that not necessarily have an impact. And I think the other approach, which is a systems approach, which is the one that uh, our hubs are following, it has to do with understanding that innovation can occur in a systematic manner, uh, in a continuous manner, uh, at a national level or a regional level. And that means connecting different actors, that is uh, knowledge producers, such as academics, with those who are in the field, with practitioners and policymakers, and, and making this, uh, this engine of ideas and innovations work in a much more cohesive and coherent manner. Uh, and so I think that that's something we should probably highlight of this initiative of this national or regional system, ecosystem of innovation, of, of looking at the interaction among these actors to create new knowledge and to disseminate it for the better use of, uh, of policies. So within that framework, of course, we're trying to promote innovations. What, what examples can we show in terms of what we're doing? So first of all, we have done country reviews to know what is the, uh, the, the priorities, but also the strength of countries in terms of the capacity to innovate. We have created maps of innovation. That means basically looking at what innovations actually work. So we have been mapping innovations in the region, but all over the world also, uh, and therefore beyond our region uh, that are related to the problems and therefore the solutions that we need in the region. And to map these innovations, what we have done is we have been um, looking and also filtering those innovations that have some kind of promising results and impact. So it's an ethical problem or an ethical issue uh, to say this is an innovation that is a new solution with impact uh, so that a country with limited budget can really, uh, well, promote that innovation knowing that it has promising uh, results. Now, in terms of r innovations that we have actually done in the region, I, I can, or, or exchange of, or in terms of innovations and South-South cooperation, uh, maybe I can briefly point out because of time, maybe two of different nature. One uh, is, for example, the, uh, the reform that we are supporting in the innovation in terms of curriculum reform that we are supporting at the University of West Indies in the Caribbean. In that case, uh, this university, which serves um, 10 plus countries in the region, almost monopolistically, uh, that means basically it's the main provider of teacher training. Uh, we are bringing innovation, we're bringing evidence 
from around the world on what are the most effective practices, pedagogical practices, that really have an impact on uh, learning outcomes. Which are these, for example, I'm talking about metacognition, I'm talking about collaborative learning, I'm talking about formative feedback, for example. And, and putting this into the curriculum of, 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 of the initial training teachers. So we're reforming the curriculum of, of a, a um, associate degree of an education, but we are also creating a new degree, a bachelor in education for primary education teachers. In terms of impact, we, know, we, we expect to, in the next 10 years, to be able to, uh, to well, change if you want or, 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 or impact in terms of 22% of all teachers, the, the teachers talk uh, in, in, in the Caribbean. That's one example. Thank you, Javier. So um, maybe just to pick uh, from where you, uh, you've left, um, other than mapping, uh, the innovations that are uh, are uh, <clears throat> there within the the various hubs, uh, we are seeing uh, actually concrete uh, cases of uh, countries uh, picking up from uh, lessons, best lessons from other countries, and, and implementing them. Uh, for example, in Africa 19, we had uh, the Gambia, for instance, uh, going. Uh, following uh, uh, say, uh, capacity strengthening and uh, presentations about the TAL project, which is not uh, uh, in the Gambia. They got interested because of uh, the presentations and uh, they followed this up and uh, went to Sao Tome and Principe, which is not even part of our hub. So we're also seeing cross hub mm. uh, connections uh, and they did the benchmark visit there. And, and they saw, and the minister went and some of the directors from the Ministry of Education went with them. And they liked what they're seeing. So uh, as, as we speak, they're already mapping out a region where they want to pilot this uh, program that is of, is of interest to them. And, and, and to us, that's, that's a really, really good thing because we are seeing uh, them taking it further than just uh, sharing knowledge. We are seeing them uh, going out of their way to seek for programs that are working elsewhere and they feel that this can actually work in our country. And they, they actually even fi finance their own benchmarking visits. Yeah, so... Now we are looking at how can we now as a hub now come in and assist with that process. Yes, ça c'est très intéressant. Euh, Yvonne, effectivement, euh, quand tu as abordé justement l'exemple de la Gambie et puis euh, Sao Tome et Principe, c'est ce que nous recherchons et, évidemment. Et euh, parce que, comme tu le sais, nous l'avons dit et redit, euh, Kicks Africa 19 et Kicks Africa 21. Euh, ces deux hubs sœurs, euh, ces deux hubs qui sont dans la région africaine. Euh, C'est vrai que il euh, y a une partie euh, qui est anglophone et une autre partie qui est francophone et, et même lusophone et, et, et qui ont les mêmes défis en fait, qui ont les mêmes problématiques et, et donc qui essayent aussi d'apprendre les uns des autres. Et c'est ce que nous avons essayé de faire dans le symposium que nous avons organisé l'année dernière à Addis Abeba où nous avons euh, mis ensemble les chercheurs euh, de la zone francophone, la zone anglophone, la zone lusophone et les, et, et, et les ministères de l'éducation pour qu'ils puissent interagir et, et comprendre euh, l'utilité aussi euh, des données et, et, et la nécessité aussi euh, de se baser sur les résultats de recherche pour nourrir euh, les politiques éducatives. Euh, ça, c'était euh, très intéressant. Donc, il y a eu des perspectives, euh, des collaborations euh, par la suite que ce soit entre euh, pays, mais entre universitaires aussi, il y a eu des connexions. Et, et ça, c'est formidable. Euh, pour euh, Sur un autre point, euh, également, euh, au niveau de Africa 21, nous sommes en train euh, d'aller vers aussi euh, ce qu'on appelle des clusters. Euh, nous avons euh, déjà une expérience à ce niveau-là. Euh, nous avons mis ensemble euh, les pays euh, lusophones qui ont les mêmes euh, pratiques, les mêmes cultures euh, et euh, pour qu'ils puissent travailler euh, sur euh, leur feuille de route, que ce soit sur les questions de recherche, mais sur les questions prioritaires en éducation aussi. Et ça, c'était un défi aussi à relever. Et nous avons réussi à le faire avec ces pays lusophones. Ils ont une feuille de route commune aujourd'hui euh, sur laquelle ils vont travailler. Et, et ça, c'est euh, une, une approche que nous allons euh, mener avec euh, la zone Afrique de l'Ouest et la zone Afrique centrale. 
également. Et au-delà de ça, bien entendu, euh, nous avons aussi cet espace euh, qui permet à tout un chacun, n'est-ce pas, euh, de bénéficier des expériences euh, des uns et des autres. Euh, pour revenir euh, rapidement aux, aux innovations au sein des dialogues politiques, euh, le, le Burkina Faso euh, a, a, a alimenté euh, donc, euh, euh, le processus du pacte de partenariat avec euh, tout cet important travail euh, qu'ils ont eu à, à réaliser sur le terrain euh, sur la mobilisation des innovations. Ils ont documenté euh, les innovations euh, non seulement euh, pour alimenter le pacte, mais aussi pour que ces innovations puissent être partagées, contextualisées euh, dans les autres pays euh, d'Afrique et, et même au-delà. Au euh, donc, euh, quand je dis Afrique, je parle de l'Afrique francophone et, et aussi l'Afrique francophone et, et l'Afrique lusophone. Et ça, c'est intéressant. Euh, c'est pareil pour le Niger, c'est pareil euh, pour euh, le Sénégal également. Yeah, re regarding the, well, the, the, the other examples that we can, we can also um, maybe talk about on from the KICS initiative in Latin America and the Caribbean, I think something that I did not mention before was in relation to the need to promote a culture of innovation and to also be able to, uh, well, gather and promote innovations coming from the ground. Uh, sometimes also when we talk about innovation, sometimes we also tend to get uh, innovations that come internationally or that are very, that are being promoted by very large or, or in institutions. So what we uh, are promoting is what we call, call the Lab Ed. So it's a laboratory of education innovation in the region. Uh, we did a call uh, for innovations in for Central America and the Caribbean. And we are funding uh, four innovations related uh, mainly with teacher professional development uh, and, 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 and issues that have to do with, with um, learning recovery. Uh, the interesting thing that it is this funding um, it goes along with support, technical support for innovations. So what we uh, provide is uh, from the SUMA and OECS team, we provide support in terms of theory of change and how to, to, to improve the innovations that the teams uh, initially propose. Uh, but most importantly, also, we have a mentoring program that is attached to this lab that is provided by the universities, the local universities. So it is a quite interesting engagement that we're achieving there between Uh, the hub, uh, the universities, and the actual, um, well, innovators themselves. Uh, and therefore, for a whole year, we are actually uh, supporting, accompanying the innovators um, through the national universities uh, in which these innovations are occurring. So that's another example of how we are supporting innovations on the ground. This is all for this discussion. I am Zé Luis Canales, looking forward to talking with you all again. And thanks to IDRC for organizing.